Hi everyone, I'm Gregor Weiss, Professor of Finance here at Leipzig University, and I welcome you to this video in our class on Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. Now in this video, I would like to start with Chapter 2, Data Sources, Data Generation and Data Preprocessing. And as you can see on this slide, in the three subjects we have, I would like to start with the data sources and data types that we will usually encounter in the applications of AI and ML in finance, give you an idea that it's not just about, it's no longer about um, capital market data. We need more additional data sources and this leads us to new problems because we need to merge all these different data sources and then we have to pre-process the data in order to make the most of our machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithm and in some cases last but not least we are also led to the problem of being uh, required to generate new data um, that we can feed our algorithms so we'll start in this video with the data sources and data types now, if we only start with financial data, even financial data are quite diverse. They come at different levels of complexity and they can be about prices, they can be about indexes, they can be about transactions and so on and so on. And we'll shortly see what financial data are, but actually even financial data are quite diverse and have always been quite diverse. Now, the data can be structured, they can be unstructured, they come at low frequency, high frequency. Sometimes we have prices only available every once a week, or we have prices, for example, that can be um, sampled from transactional data at five minute intervals. Then we would get what we call intraday data uh, or high frequency data, or at the other end, we might just have balance sheet data and balance sheet data only is published every quarter, sometimes just once a year. The data can also be publicly available. It can be private. Um, if it's published, if it's disclosed by firms like a balance sheet, like an annual report, it's publicly available. But sometimes we also have private data, data that is only available to one company and that is actually a business secret. Um, financial data can be complemented now. Um, with alternative data. I call this alternative data. Um, you could also say just non-financial data. Now we've always worked with financial data in finance, obviously, with balance sheet, income statement data, with prices, uh, market data. Um, nowadays, we are trying in research, but also here in teaching and of course in practice, we are trying to complement financial data with additional data sources from a non-financial realm could be satellite images, could be data from Twitter, could be data from Facebook, could be data from some other data source that we don't know uh, about yet or we haven't thought about yet. And the combination of financial data with non-financial data, first of all, uh, makes um, artificial intelligence and machine learning so much necessary because we have big data, we have more data available and we need more um, um, powerful algorithms and statistical tools to deal with this type of data. Um, and second, this is also what makes artificial intelligence and machine learning so darn interesting in finance because we can see, hopefully can see more than just by looking at financial data. So more data sources, lead to more data. More data in turn leads to the need for AI and ML methods to process this data, but also of course um, for big data algorithms. But then different data sources, structured, unstructured, high, low frequency, all this makes data pre-processing necessary. We need to think about how we can combine, how we can con uh, merge this type of data how we can make working with this uh, amount of data uh, most efficient. And we need to make sure that our algorithms do not run into problems in between. So we have to pre-process the data. Now, what types of financial data do we have? We have fundamental data like balance sheet items, income statement items, also macro variables that are usually published and uh, processed by, for example, central banks. Um, obviously, we have market data, so prices, also yields for bonds, implied volatilities when it comes to options and other derivatives. We have transactional data, trading volume, 
we have dividends, coupon, open interest quotes, cancellations, and so on and so on. There's a huge universe of uh, data available when it comes to market data. We have in the third category, analytics, which uses fundamental and market data and uh, creates what we would later on call and extracts what we would later call in uh, machine learning features. We have analyst recommendations, uh, credit ratings, earnings expectations and news sentiments. So this is, has already been um, processed data. Uh, it focuses on market data, fundamental data, and it complements this data with, say, for example, the recommendation of a financial analyst. And then in the fourth category, this is not financial, but it complements uh, the other three categories. It's the alternative data section, like, for example, images could be images of persons, images of companies, of products, but it could also be simply images of uh, bills, uh, Google searches, Twitter uh, chats uh, and metadata. So in this class, just like in uh, big data analyses in finance in practice, we'll concentrate on all four types of data, financial and alternative data, to make the most of AI and ML in our applications. Now, where do I get financial data? Usually from uh, vendors like Bloomberg, CompuStat, Icon, used to be called DataStream, so I mentioned this here. Um, so these are professional vendors uh, of data and it's usually only comes at a high price. So you have to pay a lot for Bloomberg, CompuSet, Icon, Data Stream, but you also get high quality data. There are, of course, lower quality uh, data sources like just Yahoo Finance, but don't expect too much from these um, free of charge sources. It's just like in any area of life. If you pay more, you usually get a, get a, get a better uh, product. And this is also the case here. But in machine learning, especially in machine learning, it's quite nice to see that there's a huge community now of uh, practitioners, researchers who have published data samples, algorithms, um, and you can access these. For example, you can find a lot of on Kaggle or uh, UCI machine learning repository. UCI is the University of California at Irvine, and they have published, if you click here, kaggle.com or archive at ICS uci.eduml, you get the UCI machine learning repository or Kaggle, you find a lot of data, you find a lot of examples, and I encourage you to look these pages up and see uh, what you can use yourself. You can also get data from public government um, agencies, for example, in the US uh, and the European Union, and you can get uh, indices, you get um, uh, census data. Uh, this is Maybe not alternative data, has been used especially in economics for a long time, but it's the first step to complement traditional capital markets data um, with more alternative data uh, samples. Same with the economics data sets from the World Bank. Um, and throughout the class, we will introduce different uh, sources of data, uh, different data samples, different databases, and you will learn how to import different kinds of data based on, say, CSV files, PDF files, but also image data, pictures, uh, in our practical applications throughout the lecture. And next, in the next video, I will talk about data pre-processing.